This is First Web Designer Success Stories, a podcast where you will hear the most successful web design professionals share their stories about how they made it all the way to the top. Our today's guest is Paul Jarvis. Um, He basically creates simple and meaningful things. Um, He writes best-selling books, um, he creates courses as well as websites. Um, He has been already featured uh, on some of the most recognized online publishing uh, companies and and websites such as Fast Company, Forbes, Inc, Lifehacker and the Huffington Post. Um, But the reason that we have Paul on our today's podcast is that he's created remarkable and business-driven websites for some of the most known um, creative professionals today. So we want to know exactly how he made it all the way to the top and what is his secret perhaps we can start off by yeah you telling you know your own words what what is it that you do on daily basis how you describe yourself i'm actually having a problem describing myself lately because i do so many different things and my income is so varied right now so really for the past 17 years i've been a web designer i work with clients i Mm -hmm. build them websites they love me. They tell their friends. Mm. But in the last couple years, I think four years ago, I started writing books. That's done fairly well for me. So I write everything from vegan cookbooks to online business books to, I don't even know, other books. Oh, and wow. then I also have a podcast with my friend Jason Zook slash Sadler slash I wear your shirt slash whatever <laughs> his last name is that he's sold. Well, uh, oh yeah, I've seen I've seen him. Invisible office hours, and yeah. then I also run an online course for freelancers called the Creative Class. I think those are all the main things I'm doing right now. I also do one-off events um, for pretty much anything. I just launched an event that we did I think two weeks ago for creating profitable products that I did with Nathan Barry and Jason as well. So I don't know mm. what I do. I do lots of stuff. <laughs> I think uh, I myself, including, and the rest of the community, first web designer community, would love to hear everything you do, your cooking skills and whatnot. But, <laughs> but this, is, uh, this is about web design. So maybe we can, yeah. first of all, as you know, we will go a bit deeper into your creative class. But um, perhaps one of the biggest questions that um, our audience, because what happened before I actually am recording this podcast episode, I asked our audience, what um, would you want to ask Paul Jarvis? Uh, we're going to have him on podcast. Once they saw how much you're able to charge for your uh, for you know minimum price for a project, they're like, yeah. how, why, how, cause, how has he got rights to do so? Why can't I do it? How, how do you usually explain it? You know, why are you so special? <laughs> my my mom my mom says I'm special and it just kind of it goes from there. So basically it's not like I didn't just start yesterday and I'm charging what I charge for websites. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing this since the 90s and I've been working in lots of different industries. So there's a few reasons why I can charge that. The first one is that I'm very very specialized in the audience that I focus on, the type of people that I work with are people that run their business entirely on the internet. Mm. So the value that they perceive of for websites is very high because if their website doesn't work, That's they it. don't work. Yeah. So I'm able to charge them a lot because this is the most important thing for their business. So if they're like a sneaker store or some other business that, doesn't, that just kind of uses the internet a little bit, then obviously mm. the value isn't there for them. So the second thing is, is that I, since I focus specifically on a... On a an industry, I can kind of build a name for myself. And this obviously takes some time, but mm. like I've worked my portfolio, it makes it an easy yes for people to want to work with me because they see that I've worked with people that now have million dollar businesses and that I've worked with people who are the top of that industry. So if somebody else is in that industry, they say like, oh, well, I like all of these sites. These are the, these are the leaders in what I do. Yeah, They all hire Paul Jarvis. I think I should probably hire Paul Jarvis too. The next thing is that I d- web design is the end result. I don't really pitch or sell web design. Mm-hmm. I sell the fact that I help people solve problems with their online business. And so a lot of what I do is 
more considered like consulting or business strategy. And I do all of that first. And especially when I'm pitching projects, I don't talk about like, oh, I'm going to build your site in WordPress and it'll be responsive. Oh, fuck, who cares? The, I, yeah. care. I talk about, okay, what are the problems you're having mm. with your current site? And these are the things I can do to help fix that. That's much more attractive to people than like HTML5 and CSS. Yeah, yeah, they care about the pain point. Uh, yeah, they care about the pain points and what motivates them. So I've kind of really focused on that. And I work with clients not just on like, okay, here's your pretty website. It's like, okay, let's look at all of your business practices. Let's look at the way that you get clients, the way that you show up to your audience, the way that you sell your products, the way that you onboard people to your mailing list. And I do all of the, I, I work with clients on everything because mm. I found that if I just do a website for a client and give it to them, they don't know shit about websites. They're going to not use that website properly. They're not going to use that to the best of what it could be for their business. So I find that the more I teach people about how to use their website for their business, mm -hmm. the more successful they are, the more they can make that $9,000 back really quickly. Because I don't just give them a website, I give them a website and I tell them how they can use that mm. to make money with their business. Right. Yeah. Okay. See, this is something I actually found out about you when I digged a bit deeper in your website. And again, now you explain a bit more about it. But one thing I noticed is you, you advertise yourself as a web designer, you know, whereas on the other hand, I've seen people advertise themselves as... Um, full service or all in-house blah 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 service so how did you decide on that how did you decide not to be upfront about all these little things that you do would it make any difference at all um well when i talk to people i tell them kind of like what all the things are but i find that people if they're looking for a web designer they're looking for web designers not mm -hmm. necessarily like people make up all these fucking titles for their self. Like, I don't even know what half these people do that have titles that are like, I'm a brand strategyologist. And I, I don't care. It's like web designer is understandable. Web designer is what I use. Web designer is the title that I've used for the like... The last one I heard was social media scientist. <laughs> I'm going to be social media astronaut. <laughs> Exa exactly. I, I'm a rock social media rocket scientist. <laughs> It's like, uh, people don't under, like, if I don't understand this and I'm in the industry, clients aren't yeah. going to understand it. Clients who need a website look for web designers. Mm. And the reason they hire me and not somebody else, even though I cost a lot more, is because I help with all of those other things. But initially, they're looking for a web designer. Mm. So that's really, that's really how I package myself. That's always how I packaged myself. But yeah, it makes sense. That's just uh, a logical step that uh, once you have this pain point solved, you just want someone to help you keep on making sure that, that, that this machine keeps working. It doesn't break down, you know, and it works properly. Yeah, and a lot of times clients don't know what isn't working. They need mm. to kind of walk through it and they need to dig into like their, their mailing list and their open rates and click-through rates or their stats and what their bounce rates are or what, how their business is working and how their business is not working because a lot of times they just know that something isn't right something's not working or something was working and now it's not. So they don't have the tools to figure out what their pain points are sometimes. They just know that something isn't working. Yeah. So the more that I can dig and the more that I can like show them like, hey, look, here's some stats. Mm. Like this isn't working or let's do a bit of um, like talking to your clients and seeing what's working for them. Because a lot of times people want websites that are for them. And especially if you're a business, you really want a website for your customers. Not yeah. really for, it's, it's less about you. Like my website isn't really about... It, it's about me, but it's not for me. Mm. If it was for me, it would be very different. It's for my audience. Yeah, yeah. So once clients kind of understand that dynamic, then it's a lot easier to get them to sign off on things. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. And also, what is the word for it? The, um, buyers, buyers instinct kicks in as well, isn't it? Why would they go anywhere else? You know, they trust you. It's like... Uh, yeah, trust it. Like people aren't going to open their wallets unless they trust you. So in working with one small audience group, one niche, people trust me because I've been doing this for a long time. But also, mm. I've worked with people. I've worked with people that they've heard of. So yeah. if I was like trying to pitch myself to an insurance company or a bank, they wouldn't know any of my clients. So they probably wouldn't hire me. I probably wouldn't want to do a website for that because that's not who I want to serve. But mm. Because I'm focusing very specifically on a specific type of person, they've heard of the people that I've worked with. So the trust factor is instant. Or they hear about me from somebody else that says, like, hey, I worked with Paul. You need to hire him. 
Ah, oh, so a and lot of it I, is word of mouth then. Exactly, because mm. I focus very specific, and I'm going to keep driving this point home. I focus <laughs> very specifically on my audience. So they know who I am, and they've heard of me. Before they come, to, anybody that hires me has heard of me before. Yeah. So I don't really need to like pitch myself or try to sell myself. It's just a matter of having a discussion and seeing, like, okay, well, is this going to be a good fit for both of us or not? Right. Okay. Uh, it it all sounds pretty good, you know. You can you can charge minimum of nine thousand dollars, or some people, you know, even try more. Um, <clears throat> but there's a lot of people still scared of the fact that they more likely will have maybe one client in three months, maybe even half a year that can afford such price. But then while we are talking, I'm actually looking at your website, and it says that you cannot accept new projects until mid May. I have to tell our audience that this recording is in mid-March sort of thing, mid-March. So it's about, what, two months. You're actually busy, fully booked, uh, charging a minimum of $9,000. So what what you got to say to these who are still scared about not having enough clients? Yeah, so I'm always booked at least two or three months in advance. <laughs> right now it's only two months because I, I'm not even talking to people about new projects because I'm too busy with mm. other client projects. So a lot of that comes down to building a reputation, right? Like I have yeah. a reputation for getting shit done. I have a reputation for making my clients a lot of money. The testimonials on my website don't say like, Paul Jarvis is a nice guy. Paul Jarvis is a great designer. Like th that doesn't do yeah. anything. The testimonials on my website, like if you, if you look at it, is like I ha Paul helped me reduce my balance rate by 80%. Mm -hmm. is one of them. Paul helped me build a multi-million dollar business. That's, That's another bad. one. So, yeah, so the way that I think a lot of freelancers and a lot of web designers get testimonials is fundamentally flawed. If you get testimonials that don't speak about you, but speak about the results that you've helped that client achieve, it's mm. way more powerful. Yeah, like, yeah. I just see, like, somebody reads a testimonial, oh, this guy helped this, this woman make, build a million dollar company, maybe I should hire him. It's like, it becomes a very easy yes. And then the other thing is, yeah, I get a, pretty, a lot of my clients are word of mouth. So I focus more on the work at hand and making sure that every client that I work with is 100% happy with my work mm -hmm. than like trying to go out and like, hey, hire me, hire me, hire mm. me. <laughs> because I know that those people are going to become my sales force and they're going for free as well. I don't give people, I don't believe in giving people referrals for bringing work to me either because mm. I'm cheap. So. <laughs> I get a lot of referrals because people hear about me. They hear other people talk about me. They hear about me in the industry that they're in. Mm. So I'm always getting lots and lots of leads. And it's just a matter of on my end to see like, okay, does this seem like a project that I'm going to want to work on or not? And if it is, then I'm going to work with them. And I find as well, like if clients are ready now, they're the type of clients that want everything immediately. Like, oh, I need a website done. Like, in six hours, <laughs> get to work. Whereas if they know that it doesn't start, they value my time as well. If they mm. know that it doesn't start for two months, I give them a list of what they need to prepare in that time. So they have homework to do. And then they kind of get a sense that, okay, if I'm working with Paul, then I have to value his time as much as he's valuing mine, which really helps as well, because then I don't get clients that just kind of like disappear or are constantly late. I know every web designer is like, I got my stuff done on time. The client didn't give me the site map or the photos or the content. It's like so common. But the more that you can kind of position yourself as somebody that's so in demand that they need to make sure that they're on top of things. Yeah. So you... I can be on top of the work that you're doing for them, then it, then it really helps. Well, everything you just described really sounds like absolutely 180 degrees opposite to the typical um, freelancer, you know, in, in pain that's, that emails us, you know. Like, I mean, instead of $3,000, uh, $9,000, they will charge three to $900. Um, instead of being booked two months ahead, they will have two months savings left. And instead of, you know, Picking clients, I mean, they can't find clients. So maybe this is the point where you can tell uh, our audience more about this course, where you take everything to a whole new level and, you know, you know, you can explain what the course is about. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is why, and it sounds like a sleazy sales pitch, but it's not. It's <laughs> the fucking truth. I made a course for freelancers because I as well, like, I get emails a lot of emails, typically daily emails about 
freelancer saying like I'm struggling with freelancing my clients aren't respecting my time mm. I'm not charging enough and I've been getting these emails for like 10 years and mm. then I realized that I was spending so much time replying to these emails with the same stuff I could just make it into a course and always have the answers there for people so the the creative I made this is why I made the creative class the creative class is for freelancers who want to be better freelancers not necessarily making like gazillion dollars and like having money fights on your private yacht or anything like that or working <laughs> on the beach on your laptop but just like it, it's really about making a career for yourself in freelancing that you don't hate because so many freelancers quit working for the man because they hated working for the man or the woman or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they start freelancing and then they end up hating that job just as much. Yeah. I was like, what That's the hell, the guys? Yeah. Like, you're in charge of, you have a lot more control when you're freelancing than you think you do. And I think a lot of it comes down to fear. But a lot of it also comes down to, I've never seen any anybody really teaching how to do well at freelancing, like what the systems and processes that you can put in place to do well as a freelancer. Because a lot of us come from like art school yeah. or like something super technical, like getting degrees in computer science or that. Not many of us, and I know myself included, like I didn't go to school for business. I learned business mm. by screwing up for a lot of years. And because I've been freelancing for a while, I, I turned that around at some point. But a lot of people and business... And learning business is kind of like, eh, I wouldn't really want to go to business school. And yeah. I know a lot of other creatives are like, eh, I don't really care about like <laughs> getting my MBA or anything like that. So I made a course that's really just like, this is specifically for you if you work on projects for clients and then those clients go away and then you work with new clients. And it's, re it's not really just like, here's how you can be rich. It's kind of like, <laughs> these are the systems and processes that you can put in place to get to charging more, to get to where you can actually pick clients, to where you can kind of understand, because what I was talking about in the beginning is like, I understand my audience's pains and motivations, and I'm able to pitch my services in a way that makes them, makes it easy for them to say yes. There's a, it's not like, I don't have a magic eight ball that I just shake and I look at it, I'm like, oh, this is how you do it. <laughs> it's like, I did a lot of research and yeah. I did a lot of, I spent a lot of time figuring out the, even down to the words that, that the type of clients that I want to work with use to yeah. talk about what they struggle with and what helps them. And I take that and I use that in the way that I pitch my work, the way that I write about the services that I have, the way that I write my portfolio page, the way that I write my, like, the onboarding process for my clients. Right, right. So all of this stuff isn't magic. There's just things that you can do and research that you can do and ways that you can engage with your audience that isn't selling at them to get the information you need to get yourself in a better position. Right. Makes sense. That, that's so, my super long spiel. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually about to say that, uh, okay, that, that's your version of what your course is about. But clearly you didn't open it yesterday, so quite a few students have been through it, you know. Um, and, and, and again, I myself have seen a lot of um, so-called freelance courses out there. You know, I, I'll teach you how to become a freelancer, earn fortune, or gain the freedom and so on. So based on, you know, what other students have told you, what are the aspects of your course that really sets you apart from other freelance courses? What, what do you yeah. think or what you heard from them? Yeah, so, and I have, there's over 720 people enrolled in the course, wow. which is, I was surprised, yeah. I'm just as surprised as anybody else that that yeah. many people, are, like, I made this course because I thought there was a lot of value there, but it's uh, yeah. just like, wow, that's a lot of people. <laughs> so, what I've been hearing from students is that it's the specifics in the course. It's not just pie in the sky, like, pipe dreams, like, you can be rich and blah, blah, blah. It's like, these are things, like, I don't really talk about, like, here's how you can be rich, because that's bullshit anyways. I talk about specifics that you can do, like positioning yourself in a way that your clients think of you as an expert instead of just a laborer. Because mm, a lot of freelancers yeah, yeah. are trapped in this, like, I just have to say yes to every client's demands, and I'm going to make the logo bigger, and I'm going to do all this <laughs> shit that I don't even believe in because the client the told me. <laughs> Exactly. I don't do that. I argue with my clients. I tell my clients no to their change requests more than I say yes. Mm. And there's there's a way to get to that point with your clients, and it's it's fairly straightforward. There's just a bunch of specific things you have to have to do to get there. And that's really what the course is. It's just like these are all these small specific things. And it's not about like buying Facebook ads or like just selling at everybody you meet. 
It's about all of these little behind the scenes things that you can do for your business to make it better, to make it so you don't hate your business, to make it so you actually enjoy working. Because a lot of people are like, well, you, because I do, I make a lot of products as well as doing web design. And a lot of people that do services are like, their ultimate goal is to build products so they don't have to work with clients anymore. That's not my goal. I actually like my clients. I like doing web design, so I don't want to stop doing that. And that's kind of an anomaly for a lot of freelancers. So it's really just about showing people how to not be pissed off all the time at their clients. Yeah. Um, before actually we jumped on to this uh, podcast and we started organizing, I think you promised that the, I don't know if you've done it already yet, but uh, some sort of special offer perhaps for first web designer community, um, because yeah. the plan is that the guys that you are, the, the guys who are listening to the podcast now can go to first web designer forward slash about. There will be a nice sexy face of Paul Jarvis, a little bio. And there will be there will be a link. Um, to his course with a little discount. What is a discount or an offer? What is that you can offer to our audience and community? So as you were talking, because I remember I said that, as you were (laughs) talking, I just created the discount. Hmm. So the discount is first spelled out, F-I-R-S-T web, all one word, no spaces, and that'll get you $100 off of the creative class if you just put that in at the checkout. So you get the course for $200 instead of $300. Nice, nice. We will actually write it down because every podcast we do a little write up, not an actual yeah. transcript, so it will be there as well, so they can they can cool. get it right. Um, oh, there's a lot, yeah. Even for me, actually, some new stuff that uh, I learned. Um, apart from that, I mean, we can try to wrap wrap it up unless you got some, you know, last little golden nugget to your fellow web designers from the industry. No, I think I think we pretty much covered all of the important stuff. And like I said, there's um, that course. Actually, the other thing is that even if you don't have the money to spend on the course, I've created a free email course that's got seven lessons. It's called the Freelancer's Guide to Good Jobs and Great Pay. It's mm. at the creativeclass.io slash guide. And you can add that in the show notes. Yeah. And that basically, it goes through a bunch of lessons on things like setting client expectations, writing proposals that get you hired because there's good and bad ways to write proposals to clients. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it talks about getting paid on time every time. I do some crazy things there that most <laughs> freelancers are like, I can't believe you do that, but I do it and <laughs> clients don't mind. Um, as well as things like getting approval on mock-ups with the minimal number of revisions. That's a huge one for web designers. <laughs> I know a lot of web designers are like, I'm on round 56 <laughs> of mock-up revisions. I heard unlimited, yeah, it's usually. Yeah, so <laughs> there's a free, even if you don't want to spend the money on the course, I know not all freelancers have money for that. Take this free course, there's nothing, there's no strings. It's just like you sign up, you get a bunch of emails with all of these lessons, and you're good to go. Mm. Nice, great one. Well, thanks a lot for, for being able to, to join this podcast, to share what you know. Um, and yeah, because a lot of people, you know, they don't—they're not very keen on sharing their knowledge. But for some reason, you're very keen on sharing it. Yeah. And thanks a lot for for listening and uh, joining in, guys. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Thanks, everybody.